I'm going to talk today about some joint work with some collaborators at Hopkins. Uh, Rene Vidal is in the biomedical engineering, and uh, Guy is a, a postdoc um, with sort of a physics background. And um, sort of this is definitely a good project for us to work on. He's always coming from the physics side of things, and I'm usually fighting him with trying to be as practical as possible with some of the algorithms that we're hoping to come out of this uh, project. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about today is uh, some work related to, well, these continuous limit, um, thinking of ADMM sort of in, in that context, and I'll, I'll be more precise here shortly. Okay, so here's the outline. I'll give a motivation and overview, and then I'll talk about some of these dynamical systems for ADMM, sort of a very vanilla ADMM algorithm. Uh, I'll talk about an accelerated version of ADMM, uh, recently proposed. Uh, um, and then by Goldstein, and then I'll talk about what I believe is some new ver uh, a new variant of, um, of ADMM. Uh, all this work has been done, well, at least the first two, uh, two and three here, uh, were done about maybe six to seven months ago or so. This down here is uh, very much new, um, and so certainly th you, you may think that this is related or even uh, is a, an algorithm you already are aware of, and if you are, then definitely please uh, let us know, because this is uh, very new, and I'm sure there's definitely a chance we could have missed something here. Okay, so let me just get started with uh, probably some work that you, you I'm sure will be familiar with, but not for in the context normally we think of for ADMM, just unconstrained minimization. Uh, so a long time ago, even Koshi recognized that you could think of this dynamical system uh, as a continuous formulation of what we think of as steepest descent here, right, where xk represents the kth iterate and delta is your step size. Um, <clears throat> it's known that if you look at uh, the function f, I'm thinking f is the objective function for now, unconstrained optimization, um, then it has this 1 over t type of convergence rate, and that that rate agrees with uh, steepest descent for the discrete algorithm, right, which we normally think of as 1 over k, okay? Since then, I'm, I'm going to focus on this slide just on really the, precise, the specific references that I think I need to be able to talk about what I want to talk about. Uh, but there are lots of other references, certainly, in people relating dynamical systems to uh, discrete optimization algorithms. Okay. So more recently, Sue, Candes, and Boyd uh, were interested in, well, what, better trying to understand, say, Nesterov acceleration. And so what they did was they uh, derived uh, a second order OD um, that also is, can be thought of as a continuous limit of uh, Nesterov's accelerated algorithm, which I've written down here. Okay? And what they're able to show for this second order OD is that it has a convergence rate of 1 over t squared, which again agrees with what we know for um, Nesterov's acceleration in the, in the convex case. Okay? So <clears throat> this is sort of some of our motivation. Um, we, when, when the postdoc Guy was really interested in working in this area and trying to understand uh, ADMM uh, and what associated dynamical systems for ADMM, uh, well, the first two questions that I really asked him were these. So why do we really care about these dynamical systems? I've always been into developing algorithms, thinking more uh, practically, designing algorithms. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that this wasn't just uh, him wanting to try to apply his f sort of physics background. So well, here are some of the arguments that can be made. I think there's certainly some truth to these. Um, first one is that it's potential to pr provide some deeper insight, and there are some examples here. I'm not going to go into detail, but where people have looked at dynamical systems related to discrete optimization algorithms and have, s and have uh, developed some additional insight. Um, there's the possibility of suggesting new or potentially enhanced algorithms by looking at these dynamical systems. Um, it's a little bit hard to say exactly what I mean by that here right now, but as I go through the talk, I'll give you a couple of examples where I think by looking at these dynamical systems, it might give us some opportunities to uh, develop some enhanced algorithms. Um, and as I said earlier, I think we also have uh, a sort of new framework for uh, an ADMM variant. Okay, uh, I'll say though that all this previous research, uh, in particular the ones I've outlined here, were really for unconstrained optimization or, or you could do uh, also simple, if you have simple projections on to, uh, uh, you know, simple convex regions as well. Okay, 
So what the talk today really is about, using that as some motivation, is we're going to be looking at this problem. Um, right? So we're going to be minimizing f plus g of z. Uh, I'm going to define this objective to be v of xz and going to look at these sort of sim uh, simplified uh, linear constraints. Okay? So f and g will always be convex throughout this talk. Uh, a big assumption, and, and to, to be honest, too big of an assumption for what we would want is that we're going to be assuming that f and g are both differentiable, which is not the typical situation when you're applying ADMM. Often, uh, right, one of the advantages is that uh, maybe one of these functions is more difficult to deal with, and they're not necessarily both differentiable. One of them often is some sort of regularization of, of sorts. Okay? But to be able to derive, at least at this point, the, the differential equations that we're, inter that we're interested in pursuing, this is an assumption right now that we do need. Okay? Uh, we'll assume that A, the matrix A, has full column rank. And uh, at various points, uh, since this is the definition of the objective function up here, uh, at some points, I'll be assuming that z is feasible. So if z is feasible, z equals ax. So I'll just substitute z equals ax, and I'll just call it v of x. Okay? So sometimes v of x, z. If z is feasible, I'll just do the substitution and call it v of x. Okay? So this will be the problem we'll look at uh, for, the, for the talk. Okay? okay, so here's a summary, uh, and then I'll get into the details about what, we, what we've done. So... Um, we are quite familiar with ADMM. Um, the column is convex, strongly convex, so it's results that we have established for, well, the case where functions are assumed to be convex or assumed to be strongly convex. Um, and we have the algorithms down the left-hand side here, ADMM. This is an accelerated ADMM by Goldstein. Uh, and then we have a couple of what I think are um, uh, new variants of algorithms. Okay? And sort of gives you a little bit of a flavor of what we're trying to we've been able to establish. So we've been take taking these discrete algorithms, develop a uh, derive a continuous ODE, look at the ODE, apply fairly basic tools related to Lyapunov type of analyses, and in the end, then you end up getting a con convergence results. And these results are are what are in this table. Okay, so I'm not going to focus too much uh, on the details yet of this. Um, there's a lot here, and I don't have time to go over this uh, in, in total detail. But I just wanted to give you a, a bit of an overview of the flavor of what we've been working on. And I'll say that in the known instances, so for example, for ADMM, these results uh, all agree with the discrete uh, algorithm variants. Um, for the accelerated one that Goldstein proposed, this agrees with what Goldstein uh, derived. Um, Goldstein really at all derived. Uh, they did have to assume that the functions f and g were both strongly convex. And in fact, q for their analysis, or g, f and g, g had to be in fact a quadratic, okay, to get this, get this complexity result, okay. Uh, we were able to get a result uh, for just the convex case, but again, this is for associated with a dynamical system. So this suggests that perhaps there is an analysis for the discrete case just under the convex assumption where you can get a 1 over t squared convergence result. Okay, and that's not part of the Goldstein et al. paper, but this, our analysis for the, for the continuous dynamical system at least suggests that that may very well be possible. Okay, so that's something we're, we're looking into. Okay, then there are these other variants which I'm going to talk about. And all these variants, there are parameters. Mu will always be, uh, it'll, it'll rarely come in in the actual talk itself, but uh, it'll be, in this table, at least, it's the strong convexity parameter. The alpha is a relaxation parameter, and this beta is a, a, dam a damping parameter used uh, in the typical definition for the, uh, used within Nesterov acceleration, for example. Okay? But the idea, anyway, is that we have all these results. You see that these parameters alpha and beta come in here, uh, and these are potentially things that we can uh, take advantage of. Okay. So, let me move on. So I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is don't nearly have enough time to derive really and, and sort of get in, don't want to really get into the details of deriving these dynamical systems. But I will at least uh, quickly do one for just the basic ADMM because it's the easiest one to derive. Um, it's still a little bit, uh, uh, it still takes a little bit of time. But I'm going to go through it kind of quickly. Focus on that for a bit, and then I'll go through the accelerated and these relaxed variants without giving any of the details, just quickly state the results 
show a couple of uh, toy numerical examples that highlight that the theory that, we're, that we have is uh, represented by the numerical results. Okay, so first let me talk about just uh, sort of vanilla ADMM. Okay, so here are the iterations that we're familiar with. This is in a scaled form. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna give a, give a proof on the next slide or two. Uh, but what Guy has been able to show is that we can associate with these, itera with this, uh, these, these iterates uh, a dynamical system, and in particular, it's this dynamical system down here. Okay, um, so what you can also notice maybe as a special case is that when A it happens to be the identity matrix, then this actually turns out to be precisely the, um, the OD associated with steepest descent, okay? But this is, just to remind you, this matrix A, right, is the constraint matrix, okay? So um, how do we do this? I um, just wanna do one pretty quickly to give you the flavor of how it goes, but I'm not gonna to spend too much time on this. What you can do is just write down the optimality, well, these are the optimality conditions for the, the, the two core subproblems in ADMM. Uh, this is the, the scale, the uh, multiplier update. You can basically just more or less substitute in the second into the first, more or less. You end up getting this equation. Um, and then what you have to notice, and this is where the, you have to, th when you start thinking in the, going towards the continuous regime, is that, well, this term is not so difficult to handle. This is pretty easy, but now you have the differences of Zs. And what I really would want is to, that to look like a derivative. But I have rho here, so this suggests that I should choose rho as one over delta, because then this will look like a change in Z divided by delta, it'll look like a derivative. If you do that past the limits, this becomes an A transpose times a derivative. That's where this derivative comes from. And this just essentially uh, just comes right down, okay? So again, going through this quickly, but just wanted to give you a little taste for how this works. Um, it ends up giving you this, at least in the limit, this uh, ODE, okay? Notice I haven't used anything about the multipliers yet, so I'm gonna use those multipliers to get feasibility. Uh, so if you look at, again at this equation, then just if you squint, you'll see there's a Z here. This ends up being the Z. You have an AX, this is where the AX comes from. You have a difference in the U's. You use a similar game to, what, similar, not the same, but similar. And then you can get that that actually goes to zero. Okay, so this is where you end up getting Z equals AX component-wise, and that's feasibility, Z equals AX. Okay, so you combine those two together. You have Z equals AX, and you have this ODE. It depends on Z dot, the time derivative, so I wanna get rid of that. So I can just differentiate z dot will be ax dot. I plug back in, so I plug in ax dot, and this is where this ax dot comes from, okay? And this ends up being how we get the differential equation. So I know it's a little bit fast, but I just wanted to give you a, a flavor for how this works, okay? This is the easiest one that we've had to derive. When we go to the accelerated versions, relaxed versions, there end up being second order ODEs. These second order ODEs, they just get a little bit more complicated, but similar, similar things are done. All right, so this result, uh, I'm going to, um, what time do I have until, roughly? 9.40? Yep. Okay. All right, yeah. so this result I'm gonna just briefly mention, but I'm not gonna go through the details uh, of this proof. But once you have now this ODE um, that's given here, then you can start just using, start applying fairly standard analysis techniques, analysis techniques to try to understand this now this ODE. So you can do things like, for example, this. <clears throat> um, if you have an X star, that's a strict local minimizer. And if you assume it's uh, an uh, isolated stationary point, so X star is uh, one of these isolated local minimizers, and there's a neighborhood around it for which it's the only, in fact, stationary point in, in that region. Um, then what you can actually prove is that X star is asymptotically stable in the uh, dynamical system sense. So if you start close to X star, it's, go it's uh, gonna stay within that neighborhood of X star and it's actually going to converge to X star, the trajectory, okay? So I won't go through the details on this, but, the, but these are, I mean, the whole proof is down here. It's, it's not particularly complicated. It's fairly standard uh, dynamical system stuff, okay? All right, 
But what I'm a little bit more interested in is establishing convergence rates, okay, as in that table of all those convergence rates. Um, this is one, so this establishes a convergence rate for the dynamical system associated with ADMM. And what it establishes is that, uh, well, it's one of these, so there's some constant, uh, so it's a one over T convergence rate, okay? And I'll say before, just sort of quickly going through the proof, to again give you a taste of how all these work, um, let me just first say up front that this is for the rate associated with the dynamical system, but this also agrees with the discrete case where um, in this setting you would expect one over K in the discrete setting. Okay. Okay, so the proof, uh, how it works, well, you have to find one of these uh, Lyapunov type functions. This is the one that we have that works. Um, and what you end up wanting to do is, is look at the time derivative, and you want to be able to say it's uh, less than or equal to zero. So all we do is write out this time derivative, <coughs> and what do we use? We use a couple of things. We use, well, the main thing we use is the dynamical system itself. So remember the dynamical system is uh, x dot plus the inverse of A transpose A, uh, and then you have plus the, uh, the gradient. So we can substitute in for the gradient to get one of the x dots, do a similar thing over here to get the gradient, and then if you use uh, convexity of V on this term, and well, this is obviously a minus a non-negative term, we get it's less than or equal to zero, okay? Once you have that the, the time derivative is less than or equal to zero, then you have that this is going to hold. Um, and now all I do is I want to isolate this term, so I just solve this equation for V minus V star, which is down here. That's all I've done here is solve for V minus V star. This is, uh, I drop this term, bounded above by zero, and then I have E here is bounded above by E at the initial point uh, here, okay? And this is how you get the one over T convergence rate. Okay, so the same game is played for all of the, the results that I present today. I'm not going to give you any of the, the details for the proofs, but the same game is always played. You find one of these types of functions, maybe a different power of t you need. You take the time derivative. You need to be able to prove the time derivative is negative, and then you do a similar type of thing. Okay. All right, so as I already, I already said this, but the, the rate I just uh, showed you is an O of 1 over t. Um, and this at least agrees with uh, the O of 1 over K for the discrete algorithm. And uh, right, this has been established by a couple of, uh, of authors. Okay. And as I also said, I'm not going to go through any more of the analyses for these other variants. Uh, they'll just take too long and they're a little bit boring. But uh, similar type of analyses are used to establish all the results that I'm going to give today. Okay. So let's go on to accelerated ADMM. Um, so here is, uh, well, here it is. Here's the basic iteration. Again, it was proposed by Goldstein uh, pretty recently at all. Uh, right, the, 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 diff the main difference, right, is that you get this acceleration. This is essentially Nesterov applied to ADMM, roughly speaking. Uh, gamma is defined, gamma k plus one is defined down here. K over k plus beta, where beta has to be bigger than or equal to three. Uh, I say beta bigger than or equal to three because I'll show you that at least from the dynamical sy systems perspective, that's really all you need. Um, but Goldstein et al. chose specifically beta equals three, which is, of course is perfectly fine. Uh, and in many ways that is actually the best choice um, in terms of if you want beta bigger than or equal to three, beta equals three. Uh, when you look at the, com the uh, complexity result, the convergence rate result, you get uh, that beta equals three is, is the best choice. Okay. And what they prove for this algorithm is a one over k squared rate. And that rate, uh, again, was under the assumption, I mentioned this briefly before, that f and g have to be strongly convex. And moreover, the, the one of the functions, let's say g, was in fact had to be quadratic to be able to get this rate. Okay. They do have some other results relating to just convergence where they can weaken these assumptions quite a bit. But uh, to be able to get this one over k squared, they need these assumptions, okay? So what I'm gonna do is now present quickly the, take these iterations, do similar analysis like I said before, gonna get in a, a dynamical system, look at the dynamical system, do the, again some more analysis, and what do you end up getting is a one over T squared rate that agrees with this, 
but under weaker assumptions. Uh, all we need is that uh, f and g are um, just convex. Of course, remember, we are assuming differentiabil differentiability as well. Okay. So here is that uh, second order uh, ODE that you get. Again, I'm not going to go through the, uh, the, the derivation of this. Um, but you get one that, that uh, is of this form where, again, beta just has to really be bigger than or equal to 3. And if you choose specifically beta equals 3, you get exactly what Goldstein, uh, uh, or what, sorry. You get exactly, um, uh, for the choice beta equals 3, that would be the choice that agrees with the analysis done by Goldstein for the discrete setting. Okay. So uh, anyway, and this is the result that I already hinted at. Again, not going to give the analysis, but you get a 1 over t squared type thing. Okay. So I mentioned this early on. This is an example where Goldstein has some results at all, have some results for the discrete time algorithm. Um, by looking at the ODE, we get uh, a result that's 1 over t squared and with under weaker assumptions. So it possibly suggests that uh, there is another analysis out there just for the, discrete, uh, for the discrete setting as well. Under weaker assumptions, maybe just convexity on f and g, that might also allow you to get the 1 over k squared rate. Okay? But uh, that remains to be seen. Okay, so here's just a quick picture to show you that um, the, if you look at the discrete time algorithm and you compare it to uh, actually using um, some kind of ODE solver, then what do you end up getting? It's just a quick example. The two that are kind of stuck together are the two that you probably would expect to be stuck together. Namely, for example, the green one is just uh, ADMM. It's plugging, a plotting log of T for the ODE. Uh, and it's also going to be plotting log of k for the discrete time, uh, and log of the difference in the objective function from the optimal value. It was a very simple example, very simple example, quadratic um, function. Okay. Um, but anyway, the green here is ADMM, and then the ODE8, okay, this purple one, so the one that's just below it, is what you get by applying the ODE solver to the well, to the OD associated with ADMM. Okay, so you can see there's a pretty close agreement between these. Okay, I'm not going to go into the detail of what solvers we use, but they are down here. And they're actually really important, but I'm not going to talk about that uh, today. Okay. Okay, so I want to talk about one last thing and then give a couple of, a couple, another example of just some very preliminary uh, sort of illust illustrative numerical <coughs> results. But quickly talk about this, and this is where I think combining these things is, gives new variants of ADMM, uh, a new variant of ADMM. I'm not yet sure whether the new variant is actually important or not. Uh, this is all very new, um, so this is, uh, I don't want to make any claims at all about this yet. It all really remains to be seen. So uh, I'm going to call it a relaxed, uh, ex relaxed A ADMM, so relaxed and the, this A stands for accelerated, so you'll see that we have the gammas that appear here, K over K plus beta for gamma, so this is the acceleration, and the relaxation comes in in the definition of the scaled uh, multiplier update. Okay. Um, so anyway, this is at least an iteration you can write down. The question is, uh, does it work? Does it converge? Um, well, we again went to the continuous, uh, pass to a continuous limit, and you can associate with it a second order uh, differential equation. You'll notice that the, the thing that's been introduced new here is the alpha, the relaxation. The relaxation comes in here in, in terms of the two minus alpha. Okay. Now in terms of the, um, so this is fine. I only have a couple minutes left. This is what we have, the ODE. I'll show you a quick numerical results in a minute. Um, what you can also do is um, do another variant of this that's uh, similar to sort of what you do with heavy ball. So instead of uh, gamma being defined like this, gamma will be essentially fixed. Okay? So here's another variant of it, calling it the relaxed heavy ball, ADMM. Um, again, now here gamma is uh, chosen to be fixed. Okay? Beta has to be chosen to be positive, and uh, rho is the penalty parameter. And, okay, so this is sort of a heavy ball-like type method for ADMM. 
And we can associate again with this another uh, second order ODE, which is given by this one. Okay, so uh, this is where, you know, if this has already been done, then I'd like to know about it because I'm not sure. The bigger question for me, also, not only is this a different algorithm, is whether this gives us anything, okay? It does give you some flexibility. Um, in what sense? Well, let's go back to the complexity results for a minute. For the heavy ball ADMM and the relaxed accelerated ADMM, these are the two I just presented as new variants. You, I mean, you can see that the alphas and the beta pop up in here. And, okay, it affects the, at least the constant in the big O term, okay? So does this buy you anything? It's not clear yet whether it really does. Technically, maybe it does, at least in the complexity result by, by choosing it uh, carefully. This alpha is this uh, relaxation parameter, so it's sort of doing what you expect. Alpha equals one here, two minus one, you just get one. And if you choose alpha, as normally is the case, closer to two, you tend to see better performance. Um, and well, you see that in the constant in the, uh, the the constant in this result, right? As you choose alpha closer to two, the constant becomes smaller, okay? One last thing and then I'm done. Um, it's a little bit hard to digest all this, but what we did was the following. We looked at all of our just relaxed methods now. So not ADMM, not Goldstein's accelerated ADMM, just the sort of new relaxed variants. Um, let's start with this one. This is the relaxed and accelerated, the red. And what you see is there's sort of this shaded region the shaded region we get by adjusting the relaxation parameter over a range, what do we do? 0.5 to 1.9. And as you adjust alpha from 0.5 to 1.9, you start getting these performance in these, these shaded region curves. For the specific value alpha equals one, you get the solid red that's inside of the shaded region. So the same thing is done for the other variants. The heavy ball method is the blue and just the just vanilla regularized, well not vanilla, but the, reg, the um, relaxed, not regularized, sorry, relaxed ADMM is the one that's in green. Basically what we were after here is just trying to see the effect of this relaxation parameter and we hope to see that, you know, as you adjust this relaxation parameter you see better performance and you're seeing that not only in terms of the dynamical system but also in terms of the, um, in terms of the discrete algorithms as well. Okay, so that's it. Uh, conclusion's a lot here. I could say a lot about this. This could be 20 minutes, at least in and of itself. Um, there are some conclusions that we have, but really there's a lot more open questions and future work that needs to be done, whether anything practical comes of this in terms of can we adaptively change any of these things. The one thing that's of interest to me in particular is a while back I was interested in how to potentially adaptively adjust a penalty parameter to improve performance in ADMM in various settings. And well, this does give us potentially another angle into looking at that to, to potentially pr improve performance. There's a lot more, but ma mo mainly open questions, to be honest, at this point still. Okay, so thank you. All right. thank you.